it's it's interesting to to think that I'm the mother of a junior high schooler that is going into this right now, and I have never thought that he'd get there, but he did. <laughs> um, so uh, before I go on, though, I'd like to let you know we do have seconds, so if you'd like to, we can be talking while you're walking and eating. It. It's all good. We, we don't have to be so moral. So um, anyway, uh, as I said, I have a son, Mitchell. He just turned 13. He started junior high this past year. And that was as scary as starting elementary school and as scary as bringing him home from the hospital. It's just all these transitions are just huge in your life and you just think you're never going to get through it and then you do. So um, the things that um, I have found as we have transitioned into, jun into junior high and what Julie alluded to was you are the best advocate for your child. Um, you, you know your child inside and out. You know their needs. You know exactly what needs to happen. The educators don't, and you need to let them know for your specific child. They have an idea. A lot of them have been um, you know, taught in what they can do for special needs children, but they really do look to you, I have found, at least the educators where my son goes, and they, they want to know what they can do to help. Um, so the first thing that obviously you need to consider are the physical um, accommodations that need to be made. Over, my son typically walks, um, you know, without assistance, but this past year he had a surgery where he was in the wheelchair for a couple months, and so not one of the portables had a ramp, and that was a fun fight. <laughs> so we, we were able to get a ramp into the portable, and um, I look at that as a success not only for my son, but for those who are going to come after him. So as you go through this and you think sometimes it's a big headache, it's all right. It's not going to just benefit you and your family and your child is fine as if it is. It's going to help people after you. So don't be afraid to fight the fight. There are people out there that are very willing to help as well. And that I've, It's just an incredible resource. Um, actually, one of the resources that I have come to know and really enjoy that once they found out that the ramp wasn't there, it got in within a couple of weeks, it's the Utah Parent Center. And I highly recommend getting on their website and um, hooking in with them because they will definitely um, guide you as to where you need to go. Anyway, so the, uh, it's important to have the accessibility to the classrooms, not only ramps, but as they get into the classroom, you're going to want to decide what is best for your child. Is it going to be best for your child to sit in the front of the classroom where he or she can be totally engaged with the teacher, or is it going to be best for them to, are, are they going to be okay sitting in the back? if it's more accessible for them to get in and out. Um, we have accommodations in the education plan, the individual education plan, to have my son either stay a little after the class ends and wait for the crowd to disperse or leave a little um, before the class ends. So whatever works out best. Another thing to consider physically is where the classrooms are located in junior high. If you can have you know, the first few periods all in one area of the junior high school so they don't have to be going back and forth all over the place, then that's a, a good idea as well. Um, you will need the private restroom access. We, it, we didn't want our son to be in the public restroom just for everything that he, he gets to be doing. So, And it's nice to, in the private restroom, they do have a place for um, all of his supplies. So, um, And also, don't expect the school to have all of the answers. When you go, I love what Julie said, that you, you be proactive. You, let them know what is needed. Um, when my son was in kindergarten, he was in a wheelchair just for about six weeks. He had a surgery, and, and the school told me that, well, you could either um, homeschool him or take him to a different school for six weeks. And I was just, uh, really, I was so confused. And I have to admit, I took offense at that, at that point. But as I looked back, it really taught me that I needed to bring to the table what I needed to do because I... I said, well, why couldn't he just come out of this level of the school and outside and go into the upper level? And they said, oh, now that you brought that up, that's a possibility. So when I asked a teacher about that, why do I have to bring up all the ideas? She said, well, in a society where you can sue McDonald's for a cup of coffee you spill on your lap after you've purchased it and get quite a bit of money, then they've got to cover all the bases. So make sure that you, you think of ideas that might help as well. It's not all on, on their shoulders. And if you bring up the ideas, then um, they're much more willing to work with you. 
Um, individual education plans are something that you'll begin with in elementary school and you will continue on with in junior high. Um, it, it, by definition, it is a, legal, a legally binding written document that outlines the special education program services and related services based on the child's educational needs. Um, what I have enjoyed about the IEPs is including Mitch, because my son, and he, um, I believe it's so important for him to be there and be a part of it, because right now I am his advocate, but eventually he is going to need to learn how to advocate for himself. And as he comes to these meetings and see what I push for and, you know, see how to communicate and work with others to get what he needs, that's teaching him along the way so that when he grows into adulthood, he, he will know how to do that. Um, with the IEPs, you can bring anybody with you. Just let the school know in advance who's going to be coming. Um, it's a good idea to bring a student profile of your child. Um, in this parents as partners in the IEP process that the Utah Parent Center put out. They have in the back a sample form of the student profile sheet so that you can tell them what type of um, assistance your child may need. Um, also, as you work with um, the educators, try not to make it a power struggle. Make it so that you are focusing on the needs of your child. And as you do that, then it won't be more of a power struggle. It'll be, this is what my child needs, and this is why I'm, I'm advocating this. So um, uh, in along those lines, you need to know what your child's rights are to be familiar with um, the Americans with Disability Act and IDEA and all these other laws that have been enforced. We're very grateful for them. And uh, the more that you know, the more that you can help make sure that your child is receiving everything that he's entitled to. Um, and with junior high, you all of a sudden have seven teachers that need to know about your child. What I did is in the summer before his seventh grade year, we had a meeting with those teachers and I explained everything about Mitch and what he, um, what he can and can't do because I don't want them to think he can't do something that he can do. He, he'd like that, but I go ahead and let them know that this is what he, he can do and um, what he can't do. So it's, it just helps the teachers get to know him a little better. Um, again, communication, like Julie said, communication with the teachers is absolutely vital. Um, there are hundreds of accommodations that can be made um, for in the IEP. Uh, a few of the ones that Mitchell has are to allow a little extra time to turn in his assignments, allow extra time to take tests, um, maybe a prompt every once in a while, even something as simple as the teacher touching him on the, on the shoulder if he's just kind of off in daydreaming, which sometimes happens. Um, then that will get him back on track. Um, having peer note taking, they have a special paper that the peers can take the notes and then at the very end of the class it just comes apart and it's been copied right there. So then Mitchell can take that home. There are just some things that with his uh, abilities it's um, hard for him to listen and take notes at the same time. Um, and then there's the 504 plan. That falls under the civil rights law and it attempts to remove barriers and allow students with disabilities to partici participate freely. And it levels the playing field so that whatever um, your child deserves, it, it's the same as what every child deserves. They're allowed that same education. Um, finally, as they transition into junior high, they're gonna have the same issues that everybody has going into junior high, those emotional transitions of how I'm gonna fit in, what I'm going to do, but as Julie has found with the, um, the students rallying around Dawson, um, it's amazing to watch even these teenagers, these tough teenagers go ahead and rally around Mitchell and open the doors for him, carry his books for him, you know, tease around with him and push him in his wheelchair. He says, Mom, the other day this guy just all of a sudden started pushing me in my wheelchair and I had no idea who he was. <laughs> and he says, I looked up at him, he says, so I made a new friend. So. There are just some really neat things going on out there with, with kids. So um, there are some handouts up here if you wanted to sign up to receive information from the Utah Parent Center. That's also up there as well. There's a DVD that you can request and these books about the parents as partners in the IEP process. And um, they actually even have one for a parent handbook for the transition into adult life as well. 
So wonderful, valuable information.